programmatically. So what we're simulating here this morning um, is a probe on, uh, say, a rover on Phobos. We just picked a name, a rover on Phobos, sending data to a lander on Mars via several hops of relays. Confirmation. The experiment data has been received. Flight copy. Congratulations. Everybody depends on the internet every day without thinking about this. You sit down, fire up your browser, or start your email, and you send it, and you don't worry about, okay, which router has my packet, and how does it get there, and what happens if the person at the other end isn't there. The system says, I'll wait, I'll hold on to the mail until you say, hi, I'm ready, and then it delivers it. We'd like to bring that kind of automation to space communications. In simple terms, it's like creating an internet in space that's like the internet terrestrially, but it has some different characteristics. Things are a lot farther apart in space. Uh, the distances between the planets are literally astronomical. And so the delays at the speed of light are very high compared to what they are on the ground. So the methods that we use for the terrestrial internet don't quite work when we're going at interplanetary distances, and we've concluded after quite a bit of work that we needed to design a new set of communication protocols. Well, the general public probably doesn't pay a lot of attention to the details of infrastructure. They don't think about the deep space network or about the protocols of the Internet. They just use it. And so uh, I think if they could be excited about this at all, it will be because we will be enabling more scientific information to come back from much more complex experiments, learning more and more about the solar system and its origins and its uh, ultimate uh, destination, maybe a lot more about whether life could exist in the solar system or whether it ever has existed. 
uh, and even using spacecraft to look further and further out into the universe to understand more about its origins. So they should be excited about this because it's enabling our scientists to do more than they ever did before with space-based exploration. If you're doing uh, space communications and you have something sitting on the surface of a planet and the planet's rotating, you can't talk to it until it comes back around again. And some satellites may behave the same way. You may not be able to see them to talk to them. So the communication in this deep space network becomes disrupted uh, and similar things happen terrestrially under some conditions. So the delay tolerant networking is designed around the idea that things are not always connected that you should not be um, expecting a response to come back right away. In fact, you're not even sure when it will come back. So uh, you build your system to be very, very tolerant of an uncertain amount of delay and frequent disruption of communication.